a scion of many worlds. Four daughters. Gila has four daughters because Jorga lay small clutches of eggs. The girls were scared. Their mother was still in danger as he had only immediately stopped her from dying and self-defense or not. Jasper was struggling to fight down the guilt. He knew it was justified. But when little girls were terrified for their mother, it was very, very hard to feel like a good guy. Thankfully, the Sidewinders had gotten everyone carried to safety in minutes. The kids would be okay, thankfully. But everyone had noticed his discomfort, so he went out to rescue more. That made him feel a bit more righteous, especially when one of the rescues involved tearing a pillar out of the ground to carry the midwives away from being burned at the stake. Whoever's behind this really wants a performance, really wants a distraction, the whole thing is a smokescreen, but the biggest and most obvious prize is something he's best able to find with a tool left back at Aridus, the communicator. If this whole thing is after the shuttle hidden somewhere around Bright Dawn, then a lot of this makes sense. Well, hell, time to improvise then. Or rather, it was time when lives weren't on the line with every heartbeat. Mission one is to save lives, so he works at it, grabbing lasers, prisoners and rescuing midwives until the darkest point of the night. He and the ever-growing army of grand midwife paladins and protectors aren't finished for a long time. Still, a quiet kicks off around the time he digs the green stone out of his pouch. Many of the girls are busy tending to wounds or asking questions. Hello? Is someone listening in on the other end? Jasper asks. Huh? Oh, hey, it's going off. Hello, O oh master of martial mightiness. How are you? Ivy asks, sounding drunk. Um, are you impaired? Because I need something. Just tired. What do you need? He can hear the lopsided grin on her face. The communicator. I need it transported to me in the same manner that my brother keeps sending books and supplies. Wait, you think we can do that? She asks the exhaustion vanishing as she clearly starts thinking. Far easier over a single world, but far faster than I can fly, Jasper answers. There are a lot of layers and levels to this madness. At least one, possibly many other parties and groups are after something with this night of blood and fire. I think that the shuttle would be one of the prizes, and with the communicator I can head them off and get there before them, or at least try to stop them from getting away with the prize. What about the protection? We have everyone safe or accounted for. A few girls haven't made it, but the vast, vast majority are out and clear. We also have a large number of innocents out of harm's way and more than a few prisoners to question. I will admit I'm looking for an excuse to step out of the interrogations. I can scare someone easily, but torture is something I am not comfortable with. For a blood-soaked warrior formed in battle, you're shockingly pure. I'm just aware of how horrific what I do can be to outside parties. Almost dainty, really. Ivy teases and he rolls his eyes in exasperation. Or rather, he shifts the focus with his eyes so that the image they give out shifts. Compound eyes don't roll. All right, I got the device. Are you ready for this? You've never synchronized with me, only your brother. It shouldn't be too hard. He lies to himself as much as her. Shall we? All right, I'm starting from my end. Try and synchronize, she says, and he sits down cross-legged and rests the stone on his ankle before thinking deeply, thinking clearly and reaching out. Something looks back and he pulls away before frowning. He then focuses again and plows right by it. He easily finds Ivy and consents something trying to claw at him but he has priorities. He focuses and can feel Ivy do the same. It's not as tight or as comfortable as when he synchronizes with Horus. There's a distance. She and he are on good terms, but nowhere near close enough to pull together on a spiritual level. The energy pours in, and what's in her hand starts to be felt in his. He pours it in from his side, and things start to go runny in the concept of what is where and when. Then with a burst of power, he's holding the communicator and grins. That was nowhere near as intense as it was with Horus. 
he pulls back whatever he was sensing before is either gone or a trick of the imagination. Thank you. It worked perfectly, he says into the green stone. Do you have any idea what this means? That even if my people weren't coming that you'd have the capacity to send aid, supplies and messages around the world in moments. You just need to organize some dedicated girls to synchronize with other members of the order and you have an extremely reliable communication and delivery system. Okay, you need to dumb it down a little Mr. Warrior. It's no fun being the smart one when the other person figures things out before you can explain it. Then get on my level. I'm a warrior and a scholar. He fires back and there are a few giggles. Still, I need to write some of this down while it's still fresh. You do your hero work, Mr. Warrior Man. I'll do the actual work of making things better. She teases then the gem stops glowing to show she did the equivalent of hanging up to get the last word in. He pockets the stone and activates the communicator. He gets it searching for the nearest system and, bingo, the nearby shuttle is active. He notes with a grin. It asks him for a password and after a moment he wonders. He doesn't input anything and it denies it. However, it gives no warning about a limit of tries so he puts in man, woman, sex, god, goddess, and gets in after putting in password for a password. I feel like I should be disappointed, but it makes a sad sense. Nothing was established in time for proper password security to be considered. He mutters to himself as he rises up in a smooth action. So, what did you do? One of the sidewinders asks from right behind him and he turns quickly to see her grinning impudently. I had this sent to me, he says, showing the communicator. That, that looks like something out of the archive. Does it? He asks curiously. Yes, a lot of sisters spend their time trying to pull more knowledge out of those things and scribing down what they learn. Smart. These things are built to last, but there's always a risk of things happening, Jasper admits. This is less a storage device and more a communication device. There are dozens of nicknames for these things, but the undaunted generally just call them communicators. Oh, how subtle. Everyone's sassing me today. You showed yourself to be a person. The clear guilt you have over what you did to Gilla brought you down from an unstoppable force of nature and into a person. She says, slithering around him. Ah, so I have to do a few more impossible things to get that level of respect back, he remarks, stepping over her with ease. Perhaps taking control of that shuttle will help? Shuttle? What do you mean by that? Relic from the Age of Miracles. This communicator just linked up with it, he says, before checking things and grinning. It has a homing beacon, too. I can find it with ease. We can find it. The riots are mostly quelled, but current orders are that no one goes anywhere alone. You're counted as one of us, she says, and he nods. Fine. That's just good sense either way. How comfortable are you with teleporting, he asks. Apparently no one in the temple were aware of the girl he tried and failed to teleport in. Not even a drop of blood had reached this place. A gruesome but fairly quick way to kill someone. Perhaps even a useful one if he learns how to make it combat applicable. Splattering someone with a touch would certainly take the fight out of their friends. Are you willing to speak as we fly? I have some questions. Jasper asks and the sidewinder nods. First, what's your name? Thinking of you as the Sidewinder is a touch impersonal. Beryl, I was named after an Aromenta that saved my mother's life, she says, and he nods. Well then, Beryl, try to keep up. We're possibly trying to beat someone to it, he tells her as he walks out to the exit of the temple. The homing beacon effect is a simple one direction and distance. That's all he needs. He guides her upwards and then towards the center of the largest island. There is a series of ruins, mostly of collapsed buildings and sinkholes, sinkholes that are shockingly straight and square. An attempted underground docking bay. Was Bright Dawn one of the earliest settlement attempts? If so, why was it abandoned? Why? He lets out a sigh. What's wrong? 
just remembered that I could ask you the questions churning in my mind, he says, and Beryl snorts in amusement. Was Bright Dawn one of the earliest settlement attempts? Yes. From what records we have and what we've been able to piece together, Bright Dawn is one of the oldest kingdoms, along with the Empire that latter shattered and then Miru, which also broke apart. The Empire, Bright Dawn and Miru were all born from the nest, with many, many other nations born from them. Beryl explains and Jasper nods. So the scattered Urthani were never counted. They were nomadic for a very long time. The coastal city-states came later still and then discovered the Yorga clans across the islands. Their history was poorly kept so we don't have a timeline. Roughly around the same time as they were discovered, the Grand Empire shattered into its component pieces. Breaking away from the Holy Empress and creating the Second Empire, the Slaver State and the Sky Marauders. This Holy Empress, the first Nagasha upon Lacron, she is the only serpentine survivor of the destruction of the Age of Miracles and ancestress of all Nagasha. She's still alive? She was a child at the time, but a child or not, primal Nagasha can only be killed. They never fade or wilt, Beryl says with a tone of reverent awe in her voice. Jasper gives her an odd look and before asking, he reconsiders. Yes, reverent awe is likely quite appropriate. It sounds like this empress has a fairly strong claim to godhood on Lacrin. Getting her endorsement will calm half the planet, easily. I'm surprised that her empire was broken apart and survived. It sounds like a lot of drama happened. Oh yes, the Empress was the first that the Grand Midwives granted the gift to. From what I understand, she volunteered to help perfect the process and funded much of it. Then the rebellions and the dividing of the empire makes even less sense. Someone like that should have most of the planet in her grip not a single empire on a single continent that's being actively opposed on two sides. She's merciful and very, very gentle to her daughters, which she sees most of Lacrin as. The Grand Midwives threaten to tear away the future of those who bring war, and she pleads for mercy for only the conspirators to lose their daughters. Then she does nothing to hunt them down, allowing the wretches to pass on their idiot ambitions. Too soft a touch and the short-sighted will ravage you. Bear steel alone and everyone has cause to rise up. You need steel wrapped in silk. Jasper muses out loud as they stop at the edge of a sinkhole that the communicator says is only 20 meters away from the shuttle. Not too bad a way of putting it. Keeping people going where you want them to is a hard job. What was that saying again? If you cannot be both feared and loved, then it is better to be feared than loved, but you must take care to never be hated. Who said that? Beryl demands in surprise. Machiavelli, a political scientist centuries ago. Smart man, but was seen as extremely cynical and is often misquoted or misunderstood. Why? He made the simple and reasonable observation that evil tends to cheat. And when it's cheating, the best way to counter it is to cheat too. People misunderstand that as him saying that there's no point in acting like there's any point in goodness. Jasper explains as he peers down into the darkness. Huh. Well, it makes sense. Liars lie and cheaters cheat. To stop them, you need to understand them, right? Right. Now we're going down. The shuttle's down there. So, it's some kind of flying vessel, right? I heard about that thing you've got soaring around in Miru, Beryl asks as she slithers into the air and starts gliding down with Jasper fluttering next to her. Yes, also, I'm thinking of having it get out to Greenstone as well. From what I was hearing, there may not be a Greenstone much longer. They need leadership and your muthy self seems to have volunteered. Oh boy, Jasper mutters as he thinks about what that will do to his already absurd if thoroughly earned, reputation. Then his senses spike through the roof as two tiny points of light appear. He knocks Beryl to the side just a heartbeat before the two thin lasers fire off. 
The shot meant for him is wide, but the attack aimed at Beryl goes right through his gut. He screams in agony as he drops from the air and slams into the ground. Beryl slams on top of him as her balance and focus are gone and he can see the lasers building power for a second set of shots.